boys and girls to Edison Public Library celebration of National Library Week. Today happens to also be National Bookmobile Day. So today, with the permission of HarperCollins Publishers, I want to read you a story about how a bookmobile got started. Today's story is Miss Dorothy and her bookmobile by Gloria Houston. When Dorothy was a young girl, and she loved books, and she loved people, so she decided that she would become a librarian. Yes, she would be in charge of a fine brick library, just like the one that, where she checked out books in the center of town, in her hometown in Massachusetts. So she went to Radcliffe College. Here she is where she read almost all the books in the school library. Yeah. And then she went to a library school where she er learned all about the things that a librarian could learn. Finally, then one day, Dorothy graduated and, and she was ready to be a librarian in that fine brick library, just like the one in the center of the square in her hometown. Soon, However, Miss Dorothy fell in love and got married. She moved away. Her new husband wanted to, to move on to a farm in a land that she had only seen on maps and read in books. Yep. She went deep into the green valleys, cascaded in the streams and the splashing rivers and the, the base of Mount Mitchell in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. The land was lovely there. Miss Dorothy's garden grew and, put, and got bigger. Out in the fields, wild, wild flowers bloomed and were yellow and pink. Inside, in her cozy house, Miss Dorothy read all the books that she had on her shelf. Her new friends and neighbors bought their books to share, just as they shared vegetables from their bountiful gardens. But there was no library, and there was no place for Miss Dorothy to become a librarian. Then one day, a meeting was called of all her friends who liked to read books. Yep. And we need a library, they said, to store all the books and check them out. Miss Dorothy said this to them. Then Dr. Masters, the eldest in the community, spoke up. He said, once we had a rolling library that looked like this. Yep. Dr. Wing, over at the boys' school, shared his books by placing them in every post office, in every church, and in every school, and he took them from place to place in wooden crates on a wagon. A library is a building with shelves and books and windows, said Miss Dorothy, sadly, though. Miss Dorothy was very sad. She wanted a brick building. Mr. Erickson, the music teacher, took off his hat and placed a dollar bill into it. Let's start a fund to buy a bookmobile. All right, everybody placed their money in the, that they could spare into the hat and they all agreed that they were going to buy a bookmobile and Miss Dorothy was going to be the librarian. Finally, the new green bookmobile arrived. That's it. And everyone turned out to watch. as Miss Dorothy lifted the side panels and she propped up the books so that everybody could see what was there. Many of the people brought books to Miss Dorothy's house and she stored them in the basement every day. Every day she would struggle up and down those steep stairs with, with books in her arms to put them on the bookmobile. And sitting straight and tall, she drove that bookmobile over the hills and through the mountains, down to the schoolyard. 
She visited every farm. She visited every post offices, any church she would visit, and a parking lot. She stopped at the t Tar Head Mill, and she parked at the courthouse steps at lunchtime. Wherever there were people, Miss Dorothy took her bookmobile. If her readers could not come to the bookmobile, Miss Dorothy took books to them. When Miss elderly Mrs. Monty had read all of her books, she would hang her husband's long red long johns up on the where her laundry goes to let Miss Dorothy know to take the trek all the way up to her house that she needed some books. Soon, everybody learned that Miss Dorothy would check out books wherever and whenever she happened to be, even if she was in the middle of the river. The, the year of the big rains brought rivers into oceans of mud, and it got very slippery, and Miss Dorothy bookmobile slid into the mud. They had to get the tractor to get her out. Once they had her out, and back on its wheels, she opened the door and swept out the mud, straightened her hair, and with a smile, she said, Well, the library's open for business now. The students at Riverside School stood waiting in line, whether there was rain or sun, to get their books from the bookmobile. They loved to wait on the play at the playground. No one was more excited to see Miss Dorothy than one brown-eyed boy named Ben. He liked to read all the books about airplanes and flying. It was his favorite thing. Everywhere Miss Dorothy went, she made new reading friends. One of them was a girl named Barbara who sat in a wheelchair. She could not go to school. She spent her days in a wheelchair at the hospital in Massachusetts where she had seen the fine brick library in the center of Miss Dorothy's hometown. Miss Dorothy brought her stacks and stacks of books to read. They became good friends. One day, a reader donated a little white house to become the first house bookmobile. All right? They, they painted it, and they cleaned it, and they even brought a flag their friend's underwear at <laughs> Red Long John's to be a flag for the library. Miss Monty sent her best tablecloth and silver punch bowl, and she offered some some food, <laughs> excuse me, to drink. All right, then years came and years went. After a while, Miss Dorothy's walls and peoples came from everywhere to visit the library, and the, the articles about her that people read all about this special library. Miss Dorothy rarely thought about that fine brick library that she wanted to be a librarian in. She was far too busy with her fine little library where people learned to read and where everybody loved Miss Dorothy and they became very good friends. Every day the mail truck bought letters from Miss Dorothy's readers, some from nearby, and some from very far away. One of those letters came from Ben, who was now a pilot in the Air Force. He said, you should see, see the world through books, and now I've seen the world myself. Thank you so much, he said, for being my friend. Thank you for loving books and for loving people. Although you were never in charge of a fine brick building like the one in your hometown, you are a real librarian and you have readers who love you. Thank you for bringing the world to us as you did all the way to my door. Thank you, Miss Dorothy, the librarian. The end. If you go on our website, you can also click on a button to see uh, the history of old bookmobiles and other bookmobiles and how they work. Some librarians actually rode on horses to get their books to their constituents. Have a nice National Library Week and watch for other stories by my other librarians and a special one by, from our director. See you again soon. Thank you.